Hello guys and welcome back to another video and another video on the BMW today. Now this one's going to be a little bit special. We are going to begin doing some diagnostic work for this car. So if you guys saw my recent video where I received the parcel which contained two cables and then that USB stick which had all of the BMW software on, you know, to do coding and diagnostic and programming and all the rest of it. But today we're actually going to get started. We're going to get started with ISTA and we're going to try and do some diagnostic work. Now, I actually have both cables right here with me. This is the Ethernet cable or Ethernet cable. We actually don't need this. We, all we need today is the DCAN cable, which is this blue one here. It's OBD to USB. This is what we're gonna be using today. Now, I have actually went ahead and installed uh, pretty much everything I need uh, on my laptop. Now, I was gonna make a video, you know, doing the whole installation process, but to be honest, when you buy this whole kit, it, it comes with the whole installation guide. Now, I really don't think I could make it any better than that. You know, it really is very easy to follow. It comes with the videos. It comes with the, you know, PDFs. It comes with everything that you need to be able to install all, all of the software. And of course, if you do want to go ahead and, uh, you know, buy this kit for yourself, the two cables um, and the USB containing all of the, um, installation files and all of the programs then obviously a link will be down in the description box um, but yeah let's get on with this video i'm going to fire the laptop up um, and then i'm going to plug the decan cable in and then i'll show you what ista is all about okay then so before i go ahead and plug this decan cable into the obd port it is worth mentioning that this little uh, toggle switch needs to be all the way to the left I believe if it's to the right then that's for the F and G series chassis um, but I'm going to go ahead and plug this end in and then we will get started on the laptop okay then so as you can see we have the decan cable plugged into the OBD port it's just down here in the driver's side footwell and then we have the other end plugged into the USB slot on the laptop now let's go ahead and get ISTA fired up. Okay then, so can you guys see that okay? I think you can. So we'll get ISTA D fired up. Yes. Okay then, so this is ISTA Plus. Now many of you have probably seen this before, but if you are not aware, this is the official BMW software that's used in the dealership. So it's used by BMW, Mini and Rolls-Royce. And it's essentially the one-stop shop for all of the diagnostic work. So it reads uh, fault codes that are displayed on the dash. It reads hidden fault codes that are displayed in the modules. And we'll get into that in a little bit. And it also helps with the diagnosing of mechanical faults as well, which don't necessarily display a fault code. Now, bear in mind, this is very, very new to me myself. Now, I am by no means a professional when it comes to ISTA Plus. There is so much more that I need to learn. And in this video, we are simply just going to be doing a diagnostics check. We're just going to be scanning all of the modules, seeing if there's any active faults, and then potentially looking into a few of them faults to find out what the problem is. So I'll just show you how it works real quick then. So first thing I need to do is make sure that we have the correct vehicle interface, which we do. Yep, Eddie Abbas, um, that is what's used for the decan cable. So that is all fine and correct. And now what, have we, what we are going to do to read the um, any vehicle fault codes, we'll just go to operations. And then we go to read out vehicle data. And now I'm going to insert the key and then turn on the ignition. Okay, so key goes in, ignition is on, and then we can click complete identification. And as you can see, it's slowly finding all of my vehicle information and then it will do a complete fault finding session on every single module 
in the car. So as you can see, these boxes here, these are all of the different modules inside the car. There's around, I believe, between 20 and 30 modules in the car, maybe even more. Um, but it obviously depends on what um, additional features and whatever else you have. But as you can see, there's a whole load of different modules here. And as you can see, the test is now done. And if you look down in this corner here, fault memory 19. So we have nine faults in the complete system. Now, if these boxes here, if the modules are green, that means there are no faults on the control unit. So the green ones, they are perfectly fine. If there is a yellow box, if the module is yellow, then that means there is a fault memory on there. And if one of these is red, then that means it is not responding. So you have a big problem if one of these are red. Um, but as you can see, a lot of them are green, but then we do have some yellow ones as well. Now, I am fairly certain that these codes are just historic codes, that, that, that they are not um, existing at this current time. I believe the majority of these was from when I had the engine out uh, and then we had a low battery and then we had a whole bunch of different things unplugged. I think that most of these will not come back after I go ahead and clear these. But if we want to have a look a little bit into what the um, faults are, I believe if we go into uh, display fault memory, Okay then, so after we've gone into display fault memory, um, we can see what all of the different faults are. So for example, we have Servotronic road speed invalid, uh, and then we have KBM under voltage, um, no message, LIN, RLS, I have no idea what that is, uh, left fog lamp faulty, uh, right fog lamp faulty. This is all because when I took the engine out and when I put it back in, before reassembling everything, be before putting the whole bumper on and plugging the uh, fog lights in and whatever else, I just wanted to get the engine started first. So as you can see, the mileage, this isn't actually the mileage, this is in kilometers. Um, so as you can see, for a lot of these, they're all at the exact same mileage, so 195, 168, and uh, that is the theme for the majority of these. So that they all, they are all, um, they all occurred when I had the engine out, um, and obviously there's there's a few other historic ones as well, which occurred both before and after that date. And then uh, here's another one here: brake fluid level too low. That's more than likely when I'd done the brake fluid flush, uh, brake pad wear, front ax axle sensor, that is when one of the uh, brake pad wear sensors uh, snapped on me uh, to replace it. Um, and then, yeah, I'm sure I've seen some for the parking distant control. So that is the um, parking sensors, essentially. Yeah, there's like a fault for all four of the front ones, I believe. I think water got into one of the sensors and uh, cause it to temporarily um, not work, but I managed to fix that just from spraying some WD-40 into the into the sensors themselves. So to be honest, I don't really think that any of these should come back, but what we'll do is we will actually uh, go ahead and uh, remove these. Okay, and so we're actually back on the control unit tree uh, and we can see all the modules here now we've actually had this appear uh, cdc underscore zero times three c i have no idea what that is i have no idea i can't even remember what module was there before um, but i think what we're, what we'll try and do is remove um, we'll try and clear the fault memory and then we'll and then we'll rescan see if any of these come back so we'll go to uh, display fault memory and then we will go to, as we can see, 19 out of 19 number of faults. So we'll go to delete fault memory. Do you really want to clear all error memories? Yes. Switch off the ignition and remove the ignition key with remote control from the key slot if present. 
Insert ignition key with remote control in the key slot if present and switch on the ignition. Oh, okay, so it was the CD, CDG module, whatever that is. That seems to have re reappeared now. But I'm hoping all of these return back to green once we have cleared the faults. Yep, so down there, fault memory zero now. I'll just wait for this to do its thing and then we'll see see if that's confirmed. Yes, as we can see, every single module is green. That means they are all functioning perfectly. We have no faults logged. So yeah, we're pretty much uh, pretty much good with this car. We have good connection to everything. And uh, yeah, you know, we seem to be running fine. And um, yeah, I really can't think of any any issues that have cropped up with regards to any of the modules. So yeah, pretty pretty pleased with that to be honest. Okay then, so I know this video has kind of been short, and you know I really haven't gone in too much depth as to what um, ISTA can do. Uh, today I just kind of wanted to do a um, quick diagnostic check. Um, just to kind of see what the health of my modules are in, you know, to see if there's any fault codes in there. And obviously, as we saw, there was 19 fault codes, but after we uh, removed them, after we cleared them, um, it was showing as zero fault codes. And um, as I suspected, uh, most of them occurred from when I had the engine out and, um, you know, restarted it up and then left just, you know, just left a whole load of uh, things unplugged. Um, now obviously if you do this, you know, if you do leave things unplugged um, and then plug them back in It will clear from the dash, it will clear from the iDrive, but it won't clear from the modules This is where you need something like ISTA um, to clear any of the historic fault codes and um, Yeah, there's you know, there's a whole different side to ISTA that I really haven't even touched today There's so many different things on there and um, this piece of software is invaluable the amount of depth that it goes into with regards to diagnosing any problems that you're having. You know, it has things like your um, torque specs, um, fluid, um, service requirements, um, part numbers. It, honestly, it has absolutely everything you could need if you want to work on your own BMW. So even if you was like to buy the whole kit and only use ISTA, it would be well worth the money. Um, but obviously if you do want to get the kit which contains like ISTA and like a whole load of other programs Which I will get on to at a later date once I have kind of mastered uh, ISTA um, Then obviously, you know, like I said the link is down below. I, I you know, don't get any money from uh, you guys buying it um, This kit was just sent out to me um, to uh, To check out and to try myself um, So yeah, I can only give praise um, with regards to it at this moment, you know, just from using uh, ISTA for a little while and uh, doing that diagnostics check, uh, I'm more than happy with uh, what it's done for me. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to uh, to learn a lot more into it. But um, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and uh, and let me know as well what uh, other videos you'd like to see. You know, with regards to ISTA and uh, the whole coding and programming side of things. Now, bear in mind, I do need to spend a whole lot of time doing some research and really, you know, perfecting things before I go ahead and make videos on it. Um, but yeah, if you do have any suggestions, just leave them down below. And I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace!